I don't know how to say this without sounding dramatic, but I lost myself a few years ago. And by that I mean I led a very monotonous and predictable life, and that coupled with some predispositions rendered me emotionally numb and passionless. Thankfully, I'm doing a lot better now. At this point, I don't intend to share the extent of the struggle, but there are some things that I was lucky enough to encounter that really revived my passion and made me feel again. These things make me grateful to have been alive to experience, and I want to share them with you guys in hopes of creating a similar impact at best, and at worst, to show you something cool and different. The first thing is a novel, it's called Poor Things by Alistair Gray, and it's a very gothic and morbid tale about a woman who commits suicide and she's revived with the brain of a baby put in place of her brain. Does that make sense? The woman, like all children, is born a free spirit, but she's in a very beautiful woman's body and is soon bombarded by all these rules and standards set by society regarding her beliefs, womanhood, and conduct. On the surface, it probably seems like just a dark and twisted story, but if you open your mind, you can really see what the author, who's interestingly a male, is trying to critique. The next one is called How to Be Alone. It's actually a YouTube video, it's lyrically brilliant and beautifully composed about a woman who explores the beauty of enjoying life alone. A lot of us don't really think a moment counts if we experience it alone, and a lot of us are afraid to be seen alone, myself included, especially in high school. So it was really cool to be pushed down that avenue to try to critique that logic because it's something that I suffer from, so it was very inspiring. I'm a huge fan of philosophy. I've got Plato's complete works here, and one of my favorite things that has made me feel is in here. It's called The Republic. Republic is a Socratic dialogue about a man's attempt to create the perfect society, and I thought it was interesting because it largely abolishes a lot of things that we hold dear, like money, power, inheritance, and even family. I'm not gonna get too much into it, but the reason why this made me feel is because this brilliant man's idea of a utopia abolishes so many defining characteristics of our society and things that we currently live for. As you guys can tell, I really like questioning my values, and I think I like doing that because there's power in knowing what you believe, even after considering the alternative. This next one is a little bit personal. A few years ago, a friend of mine was in a terrible accident. It mutilated one side of his face. He almost lost his eye. My sister was there every single day, making sure he was okay and visiting him. And I could kind of tell that he might be a little bit insecure by the scar that was left there, but my sister thought that the scar was beautiful. And she went as far as to do a painting of him that he unfortunately didn't get to see until after she passed away. I thought it was inspiring how she was always able to reach into the darkness and just seize these beautiful imperfections and embrace them. She was very interested in humanity and mortality, and she always showed that in her artwork. I remember when she finished the last few strokes of the painting and she showed it to me and a bunch of her friends, and we were all just shocked and in awe. It said so much about her and him. His life had just changed and he didn't know what was gonna happen and she just wanted him to know that he's still beautiful. It symbolizes a really important part of who my sister was and it hangs in my room. Some of you might have the exact opposite sentiment of what I have for this next one, but it's Lana Del Rey, and let me just say that I cannot believe that she is making music and alive at this point because she is amazing and it just seems too good to be true. I remember when my sister and I first saw Ride, we were both just blown away. We could not take how good it was, and a lot of people don't really like her music or they don't get it really, but she's channeling a really, really truthful lifestyle into her music, and I just find so much truth in it. I think it's so beautiful. I could play her entire catalog and just lay back and get lost in it. That's how good it is. So Lana Del Rey is my definition of beautiful darkness. I just love her. The final thing that makes me feel is Terry. Terry and I came together with similar mindsets and that was to embrace the person we love rather than try to change, repress, or control them. We had both been in relationships where both parties were constantly at war with each other, so when we first got together, we told each other everything about us, good and bad, and we accepted each other for our flaws, and there's nothing about him that really surprises me. It's amazing to just love someone for exactly who they are. Terry is childlike joy, hope, and creativity personified. He's always in a good mood, he wakes up happy, he's reasonable, and he's willing to learn. And I just love his ability to always put comedy before everything else, and you guys probably see that in videos. He doesn't give a shit when anyone thinks, and I just love that so much about him. I love how he never stops until you're smiling. So those are a few things to get my feelers going. I hope you guys like them and maybe check a few of them out. And please, if you want, share something that makes you feel passionate, because art that makes you feel is the best kind.